Hello, everybody. Andy Roman here. Today's topic in Get Real with Andy is play. Play. Listen, play is part of our original kid nature. It is an essential part of mental health. And we live in a world that's so hectic and so stressed out. I see so many clients who they have such a long list of things that they need to do. And sometimes I get into that state and, and I lose like a playful engagement with the world. And then that's like being an adult and it's so boring and tedious and, and difficult. And you know, we're not the only species that plays, that knows how to play. We may have refined it into coming up with new sports and new games and you know, millions of people are watching the Super Bowl. You know, it is a game, but it's so serious at that level. But animals play. Haven't you seen those videos of an elephant playing with a huge, you know, rubber ball or a goat or something that's using it? It's playing catch with a human and by hitting it. Uh, have you ever seen those videos of dolphins that blow bubbles? They make bubble rings and then they swim through them. They're playing. There's nothing functional about that sort of behavior. Otters, have you ever seen videos of sea otters uh, moving three stones around? They're like juggling. You know, that's clearly playful behavior. You know, also where I work, there used to be a neighbor adjacent to the Hippocrates Wellness property we used to call them the monkey house because they actually either rescued lab monkeys or something, but they had monkeys and we could hear them. And sometimes when I would drive by, I could actually see the monkeys. And one evening when I was leaving work after dark, I saw this shadowy figure with really long arms walking across the street. One of their gibbons had escaped. And um, I watched those gibbons during the daytime sometimes. These people also had dogs and the gibbons would hang down and pull the dog's tail. And then when the dog would bark and protest, the monkey would chatter. I mean, they were clearly having fun and they were teasing uh, the dogs. And then haven't you seen, I've seen these videos of a, of a parrot that makes sounds that it knows will get a rise out of the other people in the house. Like it will mimic the doorbell and so the human people would go and check the door or it would mimic the sound of a cat and rile up the dog so that they would get barking. You know, these are like mischievous little animals. So play is part of nature. Play is part of our nature. And, you know, until we go to school, we're really playful and we have more opportunities when we're really young. I used to be a nursery school teacher, so I got kids before they went to elementary school and they're by nature very playful because they don't know the rules they don't know the proper quote proper way to deal with things you know maria montessori came up with a brilliant uh, system to help the children interact with real objects in the real world in a way that they would learn and there were some montessori programs that were very strict on how to use montessori toys but i did this a summer thing in college where I attended what was called the Early Learning Center in Stanford, Connecticut, which was the place to learn uh, about preschool education. It was brilliant. And they had Montessori toys or Montessori equipment, excuse me, but they let the children play with it. And they just, uh, they fostered a lot of creativity with everything. And they used a technique which I write about in my book, Get Real, Get Well. Um, it was called synectics. It's a group problem solving method that involved a playful engagement and right brain imagery as a way to approach technical problems. And the person who was instructing us um, said, let's pick a practical problem that we have here in this school. And the teachers thought about it and they were asking for feedback from the interns, us the interns. And it was agreed upon that the block area was a big problem. And so the instructor said, I want you to come up with a solution-oriented goal. 
but I want you to express it in a shoot for the moon kind of way. What's, what would be ideal? And don't let the laws of physics stop you here. What would be ideal? And so I thought, hey, what would really be ideal is if the blocks could put themselves away. All the other students in the room were like rolling their eyes. But the in synectics instructor said, very good. I like it. I like it. And so then he proceeded to say, okay, I want you to forget the problem. And let's take a journey into the world of nature. And I want you to imagine, you know, something in nature that puts itself away. And uh, some people thought of, you know, there's these plants that are sensitive to touch. And so when you touch them, the, the leaves contract. And people came up with all different kinds of examples. And he picked, he picked one. And he said, I want you to now in the world of physics to pick something in the world of physics that uh, supports itself and cleans itself. I mean, these were like really vague and generic things, but it made us come up with metaphors, pictures. And so somebody came up with this idea that in the world of physical, mechanical things, when things are screwed, it becomes tight and neat and orderly. And there's also some kind of centrifugal force. And so then the instructor stepped in and said, it's now time that we bring in our engineers, our practical people. And they said, is there any way that we can get the blocks to put themselves away using this principle of a screw that gets tight and clean and also in nature where, where leaves contract in the way of touch to protect themselves? And the engineer said, yeah, you know, I like the idea of the centrifugal force pushing things to the edge. I wonder if we could make a platform where the kids would play with the blocks on this platform and at the center of it would be a big screwing mechanism so that when we're done, all we have to do is spin the circular platform that they're on and all the blocks will go to the, to the perimeter of it. And then all we need to do is put a ramp at the perimeter, open up that ramp and all we need to do is spin it and all the blocks will go to the to the edges, slide down the ramp, and we can have it, we can set it up so that the blocks will then literally put themselves away. And they built the thing. I mean, not right that day, but it was it was so amazing. It was so fun. And so to I'm saying playful is not only an important part of mental health. It's just a really important and helpful way to engage the world, even for practical reasons. You might say, well, play is really impractical. And you know, they taught us that in school. Don't you remember when you have play time, but then there's school time and school time pretty much means you sit at a desk and you write and you have to be still. The sooner you can do it, the better you will do in school. But really there are some enlightened schools where they don't separate play and our natural playful nature from content of important things to learn. And those schools are the models for the future, in my opinion. The question that I'm posing here is, is play fun because of what we do? Or is what we do when we play fun because it's an expression of a joy that's within us already. And I, of course, vote for B. You know, the content of it influences it. But really, I've seen children have fun with no toys whatsoever. You've seen it too, where they have more fun with the wrapping of a present than they do with the, what's in the box, the actual present itself. And that's little children that are very young. They don't know stuff yet they don't know how to discard the wrapping and you know i've seen children have more fun with the cardboard box that uh, something came in than the actual thing okay it was a refrigerator box but you know those are fun okay here's my big point have fun have fun girls just want to have fun boys just want to have fun 
We all want to have fun. My favorite is meaningful fun. I am so blessed and so lucky. I have fun in my work. Come to a healing circle. You'll see. We do as much laughing as we do crying because we're funny. We humans are funny. We're absurd. And we have a sense of poignancy that's so sweet that we can laugh at ourselves. All right. I love you. Have fun. Till next time. Thank you.